In today's video, we're gonna build the iconic World War II dive bomber, the JU-87 Stuka, and take it out for its maiden flight. All right guys, welcome to Flight Test. You know, we're not at our shop, we are actually at John Overstreet's place. This is the third time we've been down here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you guys don't know who John is, John is basically the mastermind behind all of our master series, but also you do something really special, but is it multiple times a year? Yeah, two times a year. We do our plane crazy build day. We get families from, gosh, all over the place. Uh, we get people from Ohio, we get people from Michigan, we get people from Georgia. I'm always surprised by how far people travel from this. Try. Yeah. Well, this is our third event here, and every time that we come down, we not only get to have fun with a lot of families and friends, but we always do a big project. <laughs> now, last time was the huge P-38s. This time, we're gonna be going big, but it's on one that you've been actually working and holding back for about, well, since last, yeah, last event, uh, right? Yeah, the last plane crazy build date we had to cancel. So we had planned to do this. Yeah, when that event got canceled, so did the project. Stinking COVID. Well, this time we're back. So we're gonna be taking John's design. This is actually a Stuka dive bomber. And if you guys know how much we love dive bombers, we've been doing a lot of things and I've been missing a lot of targets. Yes! Yes! Oh my, did I get it? Well, we're gonna take one of these designs, we're gonna supersize it, we're gonna build it, and hopefully before we have to go home, we're gonna fly it. So for the fuselage of the Stuka, we're gonna be building this much the same way as we build all the other Master Series. So we're gonna start by connecting a whole bunch of rings that are gonna make up the shape of the body. To get the exact form of these, we're gonna use formers that the rings are gonna push into, and then all those sections are gonna push into a vertical spline that's gonna give us both the alignment and the shape. Now the real special thing about the Stuka specifically is John's starting to design what we're called molded fins. A lot of times on Warbirds, you won't see just a flat vertical surface, but you'll actually see a molded vertical airfoil. And this is really important to keep drag, but it's also a really key scale detail on the Stuka. John did what he called a molded tail where it's going to give us that airfoil and also tons of strength at the same time. We're also going to be able to hide our servos for both our elevator and our rudder back by the rear tail so all you'll see coming out is the push rods instead of an exposed servo. We're going to work one piece at a time just like all the other Master Series from the tail to the tip of the nose. Now this Stuka had a lot of crazy body lines but what I love is it's very similar to building any of the Monster Series so it was a real joy and went very easily. One of the biggest things we had to work on is getting the proper thrust angle because we got to remember that the wing is gonna be much lower than where the motor's gonna be. Okay, so the guys are down in Missouri building this awesome Stuka, which is perfect because I'm back here at the shop and I've just been playing video games. Specifically, I've been playing War Thunder, which also happens to be our awesome sponsor for this project and this video. So huge shout out to War Thunder but for supporting creators like us to do these crazy projects. So if you aren't familiar with War Thunder, War Thunder is an online military vehicle combat multiplayer game. And it's not just an online multiplayer game, it is a free online multiplayer game. So let me repeat that, that is free. You can literally download this game for free right now and play it. It's super cool and you guys know that that we're a huge fan of War Thunder for obvious reasons. They have awesome airplanes. We obviously love flying the planes, but you can do anything from planes to tanks to warships, which is pretty awesome. Speaking of which, they have a ton of different aircraft models that you can actually play in the game. Any warbird that you can think of, and also warbirds that you've never even heard of or you didn't know exist, you can find them in War Thunder. Now, the coolest thing about War Thunder, beyond the fact that it's free, is that you can play it on basically anything. Uh, this will run on PC, this will run on Xbox, PlayStation, both the previous generation and the latest, newest generation um, as they're releasing support for them. And beyond that, the best part about all that is, it's cross-platform. What cross-platform basically means is that if I'm playing War Thunder on my PC and you happen to have an Xbox, we're still gonna be able to take to the skies and battle each other on separate platforms, which is pretty awesome. Now, naturally, I went straight to the Stuka. If you guys aren't familiar with the Stuka, obviously it's a World War II dive bomber. This is the part of the game that is probably my favorite, is their attention to detail. So the Stuka was uh, originally flown in 1935 and it went into combat in 19. 1937, and it became one of the most iconic dive bombers of all time. Unique thing about the Stuka is it actually had a crew of two. Obviously, it had a pilot, but in the back, a lot of the variants had a rear-facing gunner, uh, which would, had a huge machine gun and would sit in there and take off people who are coming in on your six, which is pretty awesome. Naturally, in War Thunder, you can actually utilize that gunner seat. They really pay attention to all of the different planes' performance and functionality. And speaking of performance, I'm excited about this Stuka because it had some pretty crazy performance. So the Stuka had a wingspan of 13 meters. That's 45 feet. So this isn't no tiny little dive bomber. This is a big aircraft flying through the sky. And the max takeoff weight was nearly 10,000 
thousand pounds. Uh, so it could definitely carry a pretty big payload. And to get all that off of the ground, it actually had an inverted V12 liquid cooled piston engine that had over 1100 horsepower. So it was a beast of a machine. In terms of performance, the thing would fly at about 240 miles an hour. So it wasn't necessarily the fastest warbird of its time, but it was extremely deadly in the sense of dive bombing. So one of the cool things about playing War Thunder, I was flying the Stuka around and naturally I was getting shot a lot. And one of the cool things that I noticed is not only does your plane get damaged, uh, but it actually gets damaged depending on where the bullets hit the plane um, and how they hit the plane. You can actually see the bullet holes on the plane. It's pretty incredible the way the physics of this game works with the uh, aircraft damage. Now, like I said earlier, all of this is free to play so you can download it right now, but now is the time to do it because they just recently came out with a massive update to the game where they updated a whole bunch of different things in the game, including graphics. They have a whole new game engine called the Dagor 6.0, which brings the combat to a whole nother level of realism. So for you graphics nerds out there, it's RTX compatible, so it's gonna work with your latest uh, RTX video cards. But even for non-PC users, it, you're gonna notice a difference in global illumination, uh, the clouds, they have a new cloud renderer, and even the effect renderer, which is gonna improve things like smoke. So when you get shot out of the sky like I do a lot, the smoke is gonna look very realistic. On top of that, they have a completely revamped naval tree, allowing players to control even bigger ships called Mighty Battleships much earlier in the game. So you don't need to progress as much to get to those huge ships, which is pretty awesome. And they also have a new battle pass system and season system, like a lot of online multiplayer games are adopting. So you can unlock unique stuff just for playing the game. That's anything from vehicles to camouflage and a lot of other things too. Another new thing in the update is it has a new interactive hangar, and this is probably one of my favorite. Um, basically, you can go into this hangar and inspect your aircraft, and their attention to detail and the beautiful graphics in this game is enough to make me just like hang out in that hangar and just look at my airplane. As you can see, the Stuka looks super sick. On top of that, it also has a sleek interface design as well as a new immersive soundtrack. So the new update is huge with War Thunder, and we couldn't be more happy to be working with them on these awesome projects. Uh, so so again, guys, check out the link below. Use our link to register and download now. You really have no reason not to. It's free. You might as well check it out and have a look at all the cool planes that are in there. Um, and you can even fly them too, which is pretty cool. So thank you to War Thunder and thank you to you guys for watching our videos. It's because of you guys that we have sponsors like War Thunder. So thank you so much. And let's head back down to Missouri and see how the Stuka is coming. All right, so the fuselage is all done. Uh, John and I are working on the wings now. This is actually going to be a one-piece wing that's going to attach to the fuselage so we can take it home easily. Uh, but the fuselage went together great. There's a lot of mm -hmm. new techniques that you put in there. I'm really happy with how that came out. Uh, like we were talking about when we first started, I was really worried about once we got everything scaled up, how everything would go together using the two thicknesses of foam, but it would be smooth sailing. Now the techniques for this are the same techniques. Basically what John has is he has an internal structure that's very minimal, but very strong. So he has boxes for the, the battery box. He has lots of different formers. And the reason we love partnering with John is he doesn't just care about how the plane looks and how it flies, but also how builds. So the same techniques we're using on this one is what we use on the Master Series and even going down to our Mini Series as well that you're designing, right? That's right. So just because these are big doesn't mean they're complicated to build, which means if you start with something like a Mini or a Master Series, you can move all the way up to building monsters like this. So for our bigger builds here, oftentimes we'll talk about taking a smaller build like the last one like we just did with the Corsair. John's actually taken his Master Series designs and he's blowing up and then shipping it to us. So we really get to just cut it out and build it. And there's not very much that we have to adjust. He has this thing down to a real science. So uh, how excited have you been to, to get this one designed into a monster size? Oh, I've been chomping at the bit. Uh, this plane just looks so good as a model. Really, whenever we uh, blow it up, uh, I think we go at 885%. Yes. Probably the hardest part is whenever we have the internals and the formers that are made out of the, the thick foam, yeah. but then we do the skins out of the lighter weight stuff. There's always a little bit of adjusting that we have to do so that everything comes together. And um, I think I've got a formula that's pretty close. I think Noah's been uh, making quite a few of these lately. He'd probably be a lot better at describing. <laughs> well, a lot of times, I mean, the computers can only go so far, but you know, with these angles, you call it the angry beaver. You just yes. gotta get in there and you gotta start cutting pieces and seeing how they fit. I mean, you can get it within 80%. The last 20% is really up to you, right? That's right. That's all right. Probably need a little more something else. Like that, maybe? Yeah. 
So right there with the tail wheel, that's how it's gonna sit. This just got huge. Holy cow, man, <laughs> look at that. Wait, do you have the uh, the spinner for it? Yeah, here's the spinner. The spinner, we need to put the this intake on. Oh, Where'd yeah. that go? Intake is right over here. I just can't fully appreciate how awesome it is until you see it all. Wow. Oh my. <laughs> So we're gonna take what we learned from our recent build with the Monster Corsair because this shares a gall wing shape just the same as the Monster Corsair did. We're gonna use also what we learned with our common box bars to give us plenty of strength and also a hard point where we can mount our new landing gear. Because I have to take this from Missouri all the way to Ohio, we're gonna design the wings to be removable. We're gonna use a box bar along with a plywood brace that's gonna mount on the fuselage to make the wings easily dowel in the front and then fasten with two nuts and screws in the back. I'm really excited to see how incredibly fast this all went together and also the shapes that we were able to achieve with just simple foam and common molding techniques. I'm also really excited about how strong this wing is shaping up to be without sacrificing extra weight. All right, so we got our wing hold down mechanism here. We got two pins in the front. We actually took our firewall and we modified that to become our wing hold downs and then we put a plate here with some blind nuts on the back. Blind nuts are really cool because you fasten them in and they don't come out. And then what we're gonna do now is do a test fit See if we can make two pieces, one of them. I think I found it. All right, you pick it up. You do the honors. Oh boy. Thing is huge. That, yeah. That holds that. together better than a lot of balsa wood planes I've done, man. That is perfect. All right, so the next step here is we gotta fasten in our little torque tubes for the landing gear wire. And then John's gonna go ahead and skin this. I'm gonna start working on electronics. He's gonna be ready to fly in a paint. <laughs> Are we gonna paint this before we fly it? I think we should paint it. That's running right to the finish line, so okay, <laughs> let's do it. All right, so time is running out here, but we were able to get the airframe all completed. And also, John does such an amazing job with painting this. We're able to get the main camouflage paint job on this using some stencil techniques that John taught us. So in typical flight test fashion, we bit off more than we can chew. We weren't able to get this 100% ready to fly at John's place. So we're bringing it back here to Edgewater, and this is where we're gonna be finishing up. We got decals to put on. We gotta go ahead and fine tune our servos. We gotta drop an Aura 5 board in it. At the end of the day, we're gonna have this ready to fly, take out to the field, and see how she does. I think we're ready. You know what I love? Is as we're rocking this back and forth, the last time we tried to take this off here, everything was ready to go here. The only problem is we didn't have the landing gear reinforced. We thought possibly it'd be strong enough. But what happened is once we started rolling, these wheels kicked to the side, they locked up and immediately it just tipped over. It blew the spinner off, broke the prop. We were done for the day. So we went back and took what we learned from the uh, fiberglass aero video, where we fiberglass the uh, FT arrows, and we actually had no fiberglass the landing gear pieces. We also fiberglass some reinforcements for wood and used much heavier wire. Now this landing gear is not only removable, but as strong as a rock, but light as a feather. So I think we're ready for round two. The only thing we're gonna have to be careful about is we're gonna be going through snow here as well. And anytime that you get snow or something, you don't wanna lift up your tail too quickly or else you can nose over. And this plane sits super, super high. So we're gonna be really careful. Hopefully kind of get right into the wind, get some speed up before we lift up the tail and we'll see if it flies. Scale one to 10, Noah. If it was a warm day, it'd be a solid eight. Right now I'm down to a six, maybe <laughs> six and a half. That's a lot of faith in his dad, huh? <laughs> you know, just for that comment, I'm gonna make him fly it when we get up. <laughs> Y'all ready? I've been so excited and so anxious about this. Yeah. I almost feel better about you launching it, but this is the first monster we have with a legitimate scale landing gear. We're taking it off. This, this, this is like a month and a half in the making. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. From Missouri to here, to the runway to here. <laughs> The shop. All right, you guys ready? We're ready, buddy. All right. Good ready? luck, sirs. <laughs> Lord, help me get off. Get this in the air, Lord. <laughs> you ready? In the air. Okay, let's do this. Here we go. Three. Oh, oh, yes! Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> wow! That looks awesome. <laughs> that thing looks like it's floating. It's like it's like good. I'm just doing a little bit of trimming. That's the speed I'd picture a suit gonna be flying at. <laughs> Everything is so derpy on it. It's, oh. just, it's just gangly. How sketchy was that? <laughs> it was. It was like gonna tip over. No. Nope. Well, typically there's a huge bomb underneath it that kind of keeps it grounded. It's like, oh my goodness, it flies fantastic. Alex, this has to be one of the best planes to follow in the air. It looks so. Cool. <laughs> is it a little windy up there? A little windy. And I'm just kind of feeling it out. It has these gangly gear on it, so there's drag coming from different areas. It flies <laughs> awesome. Look at that. Got a little bit of trimming I'm doing here. Okay. 
That's I just awesome. want to kind of cruise around with it. I'm just picturing this thing now with a big old honking bomb. I'm gonna do a nice little pass here. Oh, I love those landing gear. It looks so cool. Yeah, we got some wind. Yeah. That sounds awesome. It sounds... That's my first time going full throttle here. We still haven't lost that spinner, which I can't believe. That, that's <laughs> shocking to me. I'm shaking. I don't know why I'm shaking so much, but I'm shaking. It's cold. <laughs> it's probably oh, yeah. cold. I like to say it's for the cold, but I think I'm just nervous. <laughs> we keep building these beautiful planes, and, and this start from Missouri with John. You know, he designed this thing over six months ago, and he actually built it a small version, but we built the monster version before we ever test, test flew it. So we didn't even know if it was going to work when we built it. <laughs> a little bit more nose weight than I think I need in this thing, so I'm trimming it out, but... She's looking great. Look at that! <laughs> the paint job in the air just... There you go. Now we're kind of hands off. That Good. Okay. Fantastic. So I got the aura board in this with zero tuning uh, specifically for this monster, and it's flying just like the small one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, this wasn't made to do any loops or, uh, loops or rolls or anything, but should I try it? Uh, you know yes. what? <laughs> <laughs> Give us, give us a nice roll. You think you could do a roll? It has the most anemic ailerons. Ready? Okay. Try a roll. Oh. Uh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. a little scared there for a second. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's perfectly balanced. It's not, it's not sensitive on anything. It's just doppy. I like that word. I know. I'm gonna use it a lot for this plane. <laughs> that is exactly what this thing is. Oh my now, god. Okay. Do you, do you think if let's, you let's do a wing over, yes sir? Oh I was gonna say do a loop. Do a loop? Alex, you wanna see a loop? Yeah, sure. Alright, three, two, one, big old honking loop. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we do gotta practice some dive maneuvers. This thing's gonna be dropping a bomb in the next episode. Yeah it is. Alright, Chris, gotta do a flyby, buddy. So really a lot of the reasons we do flybys here, low flybys, is not only because it looks cool and we get to admire it, but it's also a great way to practice for landings for any airplane, whether it's small or big. So doing a flyby just kind of gives you an idea of what kind of glide slope you're gonna have, what the approach looks like, things like that, what the wind's doing. So I'm just gonna bring it right down here. Look at that. Oh, I love those long landing gear. That sun, oh. And we got, what? 10,000 milliamps in this thing, so I think we're gonna be just fine. You know what I'm realizing? Every giant plane that we make yeah. has a different different sound to it. It sure does, yeah. Especially the way the, you know, the prop runs and the air goes over the, uh, the fuselage, they all sound different. All right, Noah, I think it's your turn, buddy. Oh, no. Hey, -o. You guys always say, let Noah fly, let the ginger fly. We're gonna let him fly, look. Hands off. Hands off. <laughs> Plus, if ever I get sick, I can just make him do it. What do you think? This thing is like a giant trainer. Yeah, it's a lot easier than the uh, Zero, isn't it? Yeah. This will be what, your second monster you've flown or third? Third. Nice. Yeah, he flew the Corsair, he flew the Zero, and now he's flying this here. And a lot of times people think that big airplanes are difficult to fly. They're not. They're just bigger. And oftentimes when you scale things up, they're more gentle, they tolerate the wind better. It's just you need a bigger space to fly them. Cool thing about the monster planes here, because they're foam board, because they're light, oftentimes you can fly them and enjoy them in the same space as a typical park flyer, which is really cool. Can you imagine rolling out to a smaller flying field with a big monster and being able to keep it in that area without pushing the limits or the envelope of the airplane? Just a little bit of rudder mixes in and it just turns real nice, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm actually just doing a little bit, a little bit of bank and yank. Oh, cool. So guys, what we're gonna be doing here is this is kind of like the first round with this. Later on, we're gonna be coming back in a future episode. This had an iconic bomb drop where they actually lowered the bomb down so when they dropped it, it wouldn't go through the propeller. We're gonna put that mechanism in, we're gonna put the bomb in. There's also a really iconic siren that would make this crazy intimidating noise as they dive down. Later on, they removed it because the intimidation factor just simply wasn't there with these planes. And uh, we're gonna try to recreate that, drop a bomb and just kind of see, you know, what is it like to do this and what kind of challenges we can accomplish with it. So make sure you subscribe because that's going to be coming up very soon. What do you think? She, she flies like a dream. 
That's and what, it's, it's not the calmest day today. No. I love it. There's times like when you go downwind, she definitely picks up some speed. So since then, John's flown the original version of this that was smaller and it flies just like this. And from that, we were able to really figure out where's the center of gravity, where's the pitch authority, what kind of setup we need to do. So, so if you guys like this, let us know if this would be something like to see a speedboat kit in the future. I don't know if people really love the Stuka or if it's just us and our weird taste of airplanes. <laughs> I feel well, like do you want to land or do you want me to? Okay, I'm gonna have you land it. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping he'd say no because my hands are freezing. <laughs> <laughs> my hands are freezing, my lips are freezing. Yeah. And also, think, Alex, is there any, any challenges you want to give us, bud? No, I think landing is a great challenge. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> Especially in All this right, yeah, okay. If you're good, I'm good. I'll uh here, I'm gonna pass it back off. Alright. So not, not in my hands anymore. Ginger's hands off. Ginger's hands off. That's so we it. gotta put this down in a way where we keep enough speed and authority so I don't tip it over and bust it up. You know what? I could just go out and catch it. Yeah, no. I love you too much. <laughs> I pick on you, but I, I really... You have two kids. This is this is oh, it. Here we go. This is it. For all the oh, marbles, Jay Biggs. How stiff is that landing gear? It. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was the deepest snow. <laughs> That's the deepest snow in the course. It just, it just <laughs> kind of, it was so beautiful. Just sat down and, <laughs> the, well, you know, here's something we always say. Let's go check out the damage. That is the deepest snow. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the deepest. I, I thought you here. were going to come in this way on the hill and just kind of roll it no, up. I think he's looking cool. for this patch of grass. All right, this is my finger. <laughs> <laughs> It's a full, look, it's a full four inches. That works so fun. You want me to try round two? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I put it in the deepest snow out here. <laughs> Everything is melted except for that pot. All right, so guys, we are not done with this yet. We are going to go ahead and add more skill detail. We're going to do that bomb drop mechanism where it lowers the bomb down. No, I'm sure we're going to rope you into something with a challenge with that bomb. Something. Yeah. So guys, make sure you hit that subscribe bell. Tune in next time. Thanks for being part of the family, and we'll see ya. See ya.